Good evening and welcome. My name is Stephen Snyder. Tonight we'll be focusing on doing innate goodness meditation. One of the benefits of the innate goodness meditation is that it's not a, a goodness we contact that has any relationship to anything that we do or any kind of behavior. So ordinarily when we get feedback or mirroring that we're doing well or good, it's normally because of something we've done, our behavior, somebody approves of it, a, a partner, a, a parent, a caregiver, a teacher, uh, an employer. So it's usually because we do something, and this is something that's not based on that. When we have to do something or behave a certain way, that's a conditioned goodness. That's a conditioned expression of our value. And with innate goodness, we're having direct contact with our deeper nature, what we call our true nature in Buddhism, which is really a, a kind of a hologram in our consciousness that has uh, a full awakened presence in our consciousness that we can touch into principally through meditation and spiritual practice. And so this is one of the ways that we can do that. Innate goodness is a quality of our true nature. The benefits of innate goodness meditation, as I mentioned, having that direct contact with the quality of our deeper or true nature is really beneficial. For one, it confirms for us that we, in fact, have contact with our true nature. It also gives us uh, an inner buoyancy and resilience of spirit. We seem to be able to weather more of life's ups and downs by having the buoyancy of innate goodness contact. And innate goodness helps to counteract any negative self-talk and uh, self negative self-judgments. So if uh, most people in their psychological structuring have a pattern a kind of uh, narration of their life of likes and dislikes. And that part of that function is to reassert who we take ourselves to be, who we are at our core, our, the self that's at the core as our perception. And this helps counteract that to where our sense of self-identity is a little bit looser, a little bit softer. And that also can allow us to touch into the, um, our true nature by way of innate goodness. There are some resistances that I've identified in practicing innate goodness meditation. Uh, I mentioned the self-talk already. That's that assertion of likes and dislikes as we go through life. I like this car. I don't like those shoes. There's a way that reifies or... Uh, seems to confirm our personality based upon likes and dislikes. Another resistance to innate goodness is self-judgments. I've mentioned those, uh, the psychological folks refer to that as either the inner critic or the superego. And this is an internalized parental or caregiver figure that begins when we're somewhere in the two to five-year-old range uh, initially, very good advice, don't run with scissors, don't play in the street, things like this. But as we get older, we don't need that kind of supervision, and particularly the critical supervision. It, it ends up not helping, and it has self-judgment has an impact in spiritual practice and meditation in that it causes us to contract within. So rather than being expansive within, we we get smaller, we feel more collapsed. And we really need a kind of expansion and spaciousness as we move through spiritual practice, because that spaciousness is the, in effect, the canvas where various kinds of understandings, insights, realizations can take place. And then finally, the final resistance to innate goodness, or a principal resistance to innate goodness is compulsive doing. And once again, uh, this is where our doing is how we're 
seen and how we're rewarded in much of our life. And so that's one of the ways that we have our sense of self, our self-identity reaffirmed constantly is by our doingness. And so the compulsive doing, we can recognize, for example, if we go to sit down and relax and not do anything, there can be that little nudging we have within. You need to do something. This isn't okay that you're not doing anything. Think of all the things you have to do. Think of the lists you have. So there's a kind of driver to get us to keep doing because that's how we we affirm uh, ourselves to ourselves and by others. Well, why don't we go ahead and um, do the innate goodness meditation. So I'll give the uh, overall instructions and then some posture instructions just to help remind you of the best posture for your body while you're doing this practice. And innate goodness meditation is a concentration meditation, which means we focus on one meditative object to the exclusion of all else. And, and by exclusion, I don't mean any kind of repression or suppression. We're simply prioritizing our meditation above everything else. The um, uh, object of meditation here, the way the meditation is done, is that if you're a visual meditator, you want to visualize in your mind's eye some being you've been around, a human or an animal, that represented or displayed innate goodness. One of the most common is a, a fairly newborn baby. You can hold the baby and they have a kind of goodness just radiating from them, and yet they can't actually do anything. They can't perform in any way. So they're not doing goodness, they're being goodness. So that's one of the ways we can see it. Also, often in pets or animals, that becomes um, someplace one can see it. And so, uh, again, the visual meditators will uh, hold a picture in their mind's eye of someone who exhibits innate goodness. And if you're not a visual meditator, then you'd be a felt sense meditator. And so for that practice, you would, you would um, identify who, which being you want to use as your focus for innate goodness meditation. And then you would recall what it's like when you're in their presence, when you're with them, what does it feel like? What's the energy like? And so it's a matter of remembering the felt sense of that person. And in the same way, you're wanting to connect with someone, which can be yourself, um, a child, an animal even, who exhibits innate goodness for you. And then if you allow that picture or felt sense to rest in your heart area and just breathe in the heart area, then we just stay open and the innate goodness can reveal itself in its own time. For most people, the innate goodness feels like a radiance, uh, feels like a flowing, a warmth in their heart, just a general okayness. There can be a very subtle clarity to it, a freshness, something like that. So you'll realize when you make contact with it, it just feels very smooth and very, very positive. And also there's really a clarity that it's not conditioned. It's not dependent upon anything. It's simply there. So that's the meditative object in this case. And we're focusing on that to the exclusion of all else, meaning our thoughts, our memories, our planning, um, anything like that. We're just going to prioritize the meditation above, above all else. So we do this meditation with eyes closed. I'll do some reminders about every 10 minutes or so. And the posture instructions uh, start by just feeling your feet on the ground. If you're in a chair, feel your feet on the ground. If you're on a cushion, feel your body that's in contact with the floor or the zabutan, and just feel the support of the building you're in right now, holding you. And if you can, notice the earth beneath, supporting and holding all of us. You normally want your knees to be a little lower than your hips, 
that allows for a natural pelvic tilt and also supports an upright spine, allowing for the natural S curve in our spine. If you want to check if you're centered, you can rock a little to the left and right, making sure your weight is evenly distributed. One of the places we hold stress is our shoulders. So just see if your shoulders are holding any tension right now. If they are, relax them. I like to imagine my shoulder blades melting down my back toward the floor, which also gives us a nice open chest for natural breathing. Our neck is another place we can hold tension. So you can move your neck just a little and see if you have any muscle tension there. If you can relax it, that would be ideal. Your head should rest naturally in your neck. Your face is on a flat plane with your chin tucked down just a little bit. And the jaw is one more place we can hold tension. So if you're feeling a little tense there, just rock your jaw from side to side and see if you can relax the muscles that are in the joints connecting the jaw to the skull. We don't use our eyes in this practice. So your eyes can be soft in their sockets. As I mentioned, they're closed and they can just stare straight ahead. They don't need to participate in this meditation. Let your face relax. Your face is another place we can hold tension or stress and just see if there's any place in your face where there's muscles that want to relax. And as I mentioned, I'll do some reminders and then ring the bell at the end. We'll sit for 30 minutes.
If your awareness has strayed from the meditation, gently return it.
If you notice your awareness has wandered from the meditation, gently and invite it to return.
in these last few moments before I ring the bell, see if you can stay close to your meditation and innate goodness.